Hello and welcome. Welcome to Yoga Solutions with me, Mark J. Aquaviva. We're on a try and bring you uh, the best alpha on on um, yoga hacks. If you don't make body hacks, basically how to be how how to be kind to your body to allow your body to transform naturally. Um, yes, yeah, so I hope you're having a wonderful time wherever you are in this world. And uh, I shall well today's content is about the neck and um it's uh, it's an important subject for many people neck and shoulder problems uh, it's it's very common to end the day with a stiff neck uh, for lots of people and um i can give you the reasons why uh, in fact i i started another video where i oh god it went into all the reasons why people have neck problems including yoga including what we're taught to do in yoga but uh, i didn't i didn't want the the theme of this thing to be about what what's wrong with the world. Uh, I wanted to offer you a solution. So, um, <clears throat> uh, long story short, um, if you've got neck and shoulder problems, it's because the muscles between the neck and the shoulders are busy moving your weight around, carrying your weight and moving it around. Uh, you, you, you want your neck to be free of that job. Uh, the job of the neck is to articulate a the, the the head in space and there shouldn't be any, any sort of sense of effort involved and it's the, um, uh, the there's effort involved if your neck is already doing the uh, neck or throat the whole area is doing the the job of holding your weight up away from the ground which all of us do you know um, as soon as you think about something <laughs> um, especially if you're thinking about your body you'll probably use your neck to do so you know um, in, anyway, so uh, the, the solution to neck and shoulder problems is to take that job away, to take the job of having to um, hold weight in space away from the neck and the shoulders. Um, and instead, it's a movement of the spine beneath the neck, uh, sort of continuation from the centre of the thoracic curve where the spine can extend from from that roundness to allow the relaxed neck which has its has its curvature um, to allow the relaxed neck to be in place for the head to sit comfortably on top to act like a, a balanced ball on a stick if you like <clears throat> and uh, that, that that's the solution so awakening of the thoracic spine and getting the possibility of the thoracic spine to um, articulate it, uh, its own reversal. Um, you know, you can reverse your lumbers by, by pulling your belly back and dropping. You can reverse your neck by pulling your chin in. Um, don't do that right now. <laughs> um, but reversing the thoracic spine um, is a difficult thing to do for many, many people. And it's a thing that sort of comes with age usually. It's an absence of core engagement. Um, but um, that's the solution, so how to bring the support structure into the centre of things so that you can rest through your spine and have your head floating on top. And uh, the spine needs to be elongating in response to the breath and its release in order for that to be possible. Otherwise you have to lift to breathe and then you collapse when you breathe out, which leaves you holding yourself up if you want to stay put. So. Um, <laughs> that's a broad overview of what what we need to do but to help with that 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 i was just playing with this the 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 source issue is leading your weight with the head so it you know if you if you decide to look to the right and you pull your head around to the right you, you're leading the movement and, and the muscles of the neck do that job and they pull you with it um it's it's a kind of normal thing to do so I, w I was giving it some thought and i and it sort of made sense to me that the weight of the head is something that that um is supposed to kind of help direct your movement but um how that weight can uh, be involved in the 
in the movements that you wish to take without your neck having to carry the weight. And the, the answer came to me. It's very straightforward. It's that movement of the first vertebra of the neck, the atlas. It's um, a ring-shaped kind of vertebra upon which there is a kind of, um, it, well, it's elliptical, really, and there's a kind of a, uh, a bump that fits inside at the base of the skull. And the skull then has the opportunity to just sort of slide from side to side. It's wider than it is deep, so, so side to side movements of the head on the first vertebra can be done. And, and if, you, um, if you bring your fingers up to your head and, and uh, I, I find a way of sort of propping your face up so you can relax your neck, you can just very slightly, without any resistance from your neck at all, just see if you've got that side to side movement. No, um, can you just use your fingers to tilt your head one way or the other with the rest of you staying relaxed in place? And uh, there's another, the, the, the other part of that movement is forwards and back. Um, and it's kind of harder because most people do that by uh, from the neck itself, where they sort of drop the head and then lift the head. But, but there's a tiny possibility of that um, kind of saddle-like movement of the skull sitting on that first vertebra and uh, the that's the anatomy of it but the the function of it is simply your attention you know if you're interested in what's in front of you what happens is their head rolls back into it rolls it rolls back into that vertebra to bring your weight forwards because the, the weight of the skull is transmitting through the spine to the ground uh, behind you to allow you to sit forwards. So you being interested in something in front of you, you being open to it, you being, uh, and, and one of my analogies is present your face for a kiss, you know? So if you, if you present your face for a kiss, part of that movement involves the head rolling on that first vertebra to allow your weight to move forwards, yeah? And then becoming introverted, uh, going inwards, will do the opposite. So instead of dropping your head, you let the head just roll slightly forwards on that first vertebra, and that will bring you back into yourself. So it's about where your attention is, rather than what you do with your head and your neck. And um, that, that gives you the, the clue of what I'm, what I'm going to try and uh, offer you now. If, if you've sort of explored the potential for that, those movements and there's sort of no effort involved from the neck itself and your hands can make sure that that happens, you know. Yeah. Uh, if you've got that feeling that the head can be this thing that balances on the first vertebra, then the way to wake up, um, well, the way, the way to sort your neck out is to find ways of leaving the head relaxed in place. And instead of leading with the head, you kind of leave it resting and it might do tiny little side to side things to join in or tiny little forwards and back things to join in. But it's not you doing it with your neck. It's just a sort of an attitude thing from your face, from your intention. You might want to go inwards. You might want to be more present. You might want to be more interested over to the right, which will make your head roll over to the left. Or you might want to be more interested in the left, which will roll your head over to the right. So it's your attention that moves your head on this first vertebra. And the... The thing that I want you to do, let's get a slightly bigger screen. Oh, wrong one. Hang on. That one. Uh, the thing I want you to do is to just start with um, your hands resting down on your lap. Find this sort of position in space, uh, whether you're forwards and up 
or back and down. See, see where, you, where you are. But no weight bearing with your neck. Your head, your, your attention needs to be sort of floating in space and allowed to move appropriately until you find a way of kind of dropping down through your hands so that if you choose to be forwards, forwards, which will give some weight to your hands, if you choose to drop down through your hands, through your arms, your shoulders can relax behind you, that downward release of weight through your arms should allow you to let go of any holding at the base of the skull. So, because basically the hands can be catching the weight of this floating head. And the job is to try and leave the head floating. So anytime you feel your neck catching, you need to stop. But I want you to kind of move around randomly from the body underneath the head. Leave the shoulders, um, leave, leave the arm kind of arrangement where it is. So the pressure in your hands shouldn't get any heavier if you get closer to the hands. And it shouldn't get any lighter if you move away from the hands. And any time you catch yourself holding the head in space, pause, take a breath, see if the hands can take your, your weight with that breath so your head can float and then release down away from where your face is in space. And the thing that allows that release down away from you is your rib cage, your breathing gear, part of your breathing gear. And if you allow sort of gentle movements where the head is being swung around by the body and it's not the the neck is not joining in and causing that movement so you have to stay completely relaxed in your head and explore different movements where you go inwards and back or you go forwards and up inwards and back forwards and out in your retention and every time you notice that your neck does that lifting or your neck takes the weight, you pause, you take a breath. Hold the breath for a moment whilst you make sure you can relax the weight of the head into your hands. Don't get too heavy. So the shoulders need to be behind you and then release the breath from where you in your face and head are in space. So the body falls away from the head. And if you do this with random kind of movements with a basic intention to swing your head around uh, without involving your neck, you'll find that the, the thing that does the moving, particularly if you can keep a sort of steady sense of contact with the hands without your arms having to push at all, the thing that does the moving is the rib cage and the core. The core gathers back and it's drawn up, which pulls the ribs down. The chest bears down and uses the ground for support wherever you are. It can drop there, chest and ribs, and that causes the core to empty back and up. So it's a relationship between those two things that allows you to stay with a, a head that's relaxed on that first vertebra so that it's, um, its mass can roll around on that first vertebra depending on where you are in space and your job is to move around using the body underneath the head so if you want your head over to the left it's your body using the ground to bring it there. it's not your neck your head is left behind on that on that sitting on that on that vertebra But of course you travel in space because you'll find if you turn to the right for example it'll be your uh, your chest and ribs on the right that are coming together and finding ground somewhere to allow you to move them to bring your head over if you swing over to the left so i'm emphasizing down at the moment you swing over to the left 
there will be the, the core drawing up on the left and the ribs anchoring down on the left. That brings your face round with a caveat that there's supposed to be no effort in the sides of the neck at all, or the back, or the front. And th these movements kind of go with breathing. So if you swing your head over to the left with the inhale, your left ribs will come together, but it will push you out into space on the right. So you can imagine, if you want to breathe what you're doing, in order to swing your head over to the left, you breathe into the right, and you'll find the right sit bone, the right base, there taking most more of your weight as you breathe. If you want to do it as you release the breath, it will be the side of the breath out of the left ribs, using the ground underneath you, possibly even the opposite sit bone. can be the same, but if it's the same sit bone, it will be slightly heavier. So how can you stay absolutely passive in the carrying of the waist of the head? And because you're allowing the head to roll around in that first vertebra, the way it organizes it itself once you've swung it should be that it's giving its weight back down through the spine. If you want to be in, if you want to have more of an up relationship whilst doing this, then what you can do is get a sense of, um, well, it, it's the crisscross thing. So if you take your weight over to the left pelvis, but then see if the right ribs, as you travel forwards over that left base, see if the right ribs can drop away from you. Remember, you shouldn't be pushing with the arms. The hands stay steady on the lap, so the wings, the shoulders will have to move appropriately. So you get a sense of the opposite ribs coming together to lift the right side away from the ground. Okay. Now try and find that swing in your head where the head doesn't do anything. And then what's going on is these, these ribs on the right need to find the ground on the left. So you need to be more forwards with that. So allowing the head to rock back on the atlas, not pulling it back, and allowing the ribs on the right to sit diagonally through to the base on the left. Leave your other leg behind, relax it. And the more those ribs come together, the more forwards you are, the further round to the back those ribs work. And it's underneath this relaxed shoulder. Those ribs dropping to the ground on the left, ribs between the neck and shoulder on the right, dropping to the ground on the left, means that your head will be up, not because you're lifting it. There should, should be no holding of the left side of the neck and shoulder together. So it's about the crisscross relationship. You're giving your weight to the ground as you breathe. So the breath comes up through the left hand side directly. And when you release the breath, you give it down through the space between neck and shoulder to get those top ribs to find some support. If the chest can walk, fall away from the face as the head sits forwards uh, rolls back over to sit forwards the atlas the chest can fall away from that there's no reason for any holding of the head at the back so you can try the other way take the roll the weight over to the right but as you drop weight through the right if you breathe into the right hand side and allow yourself to turn to the left Make sure that their neck has done nothing, or if it has done something, you can let it go. And what we're looking for is a sense of balance that allows the ribs between the neck and shoulder to find the ground on the right-hand side, probably more forwards than you're used to. So that when you let go of the breath, those ribs come together quite naturally. 
The head needs to have no ambition to turn, but it allows a turn to happen from the spine between the shoulder, between the shoulder blade, well, between the shoulder blades, below the neck. The reason you have to constantly check in that the muscles around the skull and neck and throat are not involved is so that you stay with this idea that it's the body underneath you that is swinging the head round in, in space, but it's moving in a way where the spine can come forwards because of this movement of the ribs. Hands stay touching your lap. Anytime you feel holding yourself holding your head up, you can take a breath by resting the weight of the head on the hand and then release the body away from it with the release of the breath. Okay, so if, if that worked, when you come back to the middle, you will have worked your core and your ribs. If you were relaxed enough in your base, you won't have got tense in the hips. Um, and that requires core responsiveness. So you, you will feel together in the middle. But everything from the wings up should feel, well, it should feel like the head floats and the wings drop back and down away from your face, but not into your lower back. It's sort of, it's more centered in your heart. The center of your gravity can become your heart. So if you can sort of generally get used to, get your nervous system used to not leading with the muscles of the head, but if you want your head to be moved, leaving it passive, it will rock on that first vertebra, which is the feeling of a floating head. To rock on that first vertebra, side to side, forwards and back, but because of what the body's doing underneath it, not because of what you do with your neck. And being centered in your heart, completely present to space, but rested within yourself, is all those conditions that we look for, for a yoga experience, the, the, the equality of inwards and outwards, the equality of uh, strength and release, you know? So I hope that was useful. Um, feel free to share this around. If, you, if you've got some benefit from it, please let me know. Uh, in, in the comments smash up the like button for me uh, to encourage me to keep doing these things share it around anywhere you like on facebook or youtube i, I usually upload these to youtube as well and um, i shall do a little bit more for my premium members um, where these yoga solutions are turned into a bit of a longer class and uh, I'll, I'll be doing that in a moment and that will be posted up on my website for my members later on today uh, you can you can get a membership. Uh, there's also there's all sorts of options depending on your uh, how much you want to uh, work with me. Um, but um, silver membership, which is about a pound a week, gets you access to every single one of these yoga solutions I've ever done, which is coming to around two hundred of them now. Um, loads of topics and uh, yeah, lots of value there. Uh, so yeah, otherwise I shall see you on something soon, I hope, either here or on one of my weekend workshops uh, every Saturday morning. I've got a yoga retreat coming up in Turkey, I believe, I, I have no idea, but I, I would imagine there's a place or two left. Um, it's a lovely place up in the hills in Gürcek, uh, near Dalaman in Turkey, run by, well, uh, hosted by Tristan Neon, she, she uh, we, we uh, do different slots in the day. I, I do the afternoon workshops. She does the morning class. Um, so it's a lovely experience and the food is amazing. If you want to, if you're looking for a yoga retreat, this is the one to do. Um, so um, that's in July, coming up very soon. And um, I have the yoga festival in August. But other than that, you can work with me every Saturday, pretty much every Saturday, 10.30, uh, for a two and a half hour interactive workshop or if it's for you only, you get it for half price. All right, my dears, I shall see you soon. Um, yeah.
Bueno, 